Hello everyone, myself Dr. Suresh and in this video we will be talking about the metabolism of adipose tissue. So we are all aware adipose tissue is also an organ which can store excess amounts of fatty acids that we have congested as excess calories. Okay. So the main fatty acids that will be are made the lipid things which will be stored in adipose tissue are TAG because there are variety types of lipids are there like uh, fatty acids, glycerol and uh, compound lipids, complex lipids, derived lipids, okay simple lipids. So out of all these TAG simple lipids like triacylglycerols can be easily stored in the adipose tissue. Okay. So the TAG that are storing in adipose tissue which are not inert, okay. So they undergo a daily turnover with new triacylglycerol molecules being synthesized, definite fraction of being break down. That means what it means once the TAG has been stored, okay, they cannot be permanently be stored, okay. So every day new TAG will come, the old TAG will be broken down. So there is like a recycling, right. So that is the meaning of not inert, okay. TAG in adipose tissue are not inert. That means new TAG will be synthesized continuously, same way stored TAG will be broken down. Adipose tissues in well fed condition. So, in under well fed condition, excess calories will be converted to fatty acids and they are synthesized fatty acids attached to glycerol and they form TAG and they are stored in adipose tissues. So, in under well fed conditions, active lipogenesis occurs in adipose tissue. The dietary TAG are transported by chylomicrons. So, here there is a difference. The triacylglycerols which are transported by chylomicrons are the exogenous the dietary okay they are known as exogenous TAG they will be transported by chylomicrons to the liver and from liver because liver also capable in synthesis of TAG okay that TAG known as endogenously synthesized TAG which will be transported to other part of the body by a VLDL. VLDL is very low density lipoprotein. It is also one of the lipoprotein. Both chylomicrons and VLDL are taken up by adipose tissue and stored as triacylglycerol. The lipoprotein molecules are broken down by lipoprotein lipase which are present in capillary wall. Okay. The lipoproteins, the molecules which are broken down by the lipoprotein lipase which are present in the capillary wall of the circulated blood vessels. So in well fed condition, glucose and insulin levels are high. So, GLUT4 transporters which are present in the muscles as well as in adipose tissue which are insulin dependent. So, this insulin what it will do, it increases the TAG synthesis, okay. So, insulin increases activity of glycolytic enzymes as well as pyruvate dehydrogenase, acetyl coa carboxylase for lipid synthesis that means fatty acid synthesis and glycerol phosphate acyl transferase for TAG synthesis. The stimulant effect of insulin HMP pathway also enhances lipogenesis because HMP pathway is mainly for NADPH production and NADPH mainly is required in making of fatty acids as well as TAG. So insulin causes inhibition of hormone sensitive lipase because hormone sensitive lipase involved in breaking down of triacylglycerols in the adipose tissue. Okay. So to avoid this insulin has inhibitory effect on hormone sensitive lipase. Adipose tissue, so, so far we have discussed uh, adipose tissue metabolism in well fed state. Now we will see what are the changes that will happen to adipose tissue in fasting condition. So the metabolic pattern totally changes under fasting. Okay, TAG from adipose tissue is mobilized under the effect of hormones like glucagon, epinephrine. They will translocate the TAG, whatever the TAG is there in adipose tissue to the circulation. So in circulation, we already know hormone sensitive lipase is there. So as we require energy, so there is no release of insulin, so there is release of glucagon. This glucagon has an uh, activating effect on hormone sensitive lipase and the mobilized TH will be broken down by hormone sensitive lipase into free fatty acids and glycerol and free fatty acids undergo beta oxidation to provide energy. At the same time glycerol will be transported back to uh, liver, there it converted to again one of the forms of intermediates of gluconeogenesis. Okay. So the cyclic AMP mediated activation cascade enhances intracellular hormone sensitive lipase. So via CAMP it activates protein kinase and protein kinase converts inactive uh, hormone sensitive lipase to active hormone sensitive lipase. Under condition, conditions of starvation, a high glucagon, adrenocorticotropic hormone, glucocorticoids and thyroxin have lipolytic effect. The release of fatty acids are taken up by peripheral tissues as fuel and making them undergo beta oxidation. So change in adipose tissue. So in well fed state what is happening, lipogenesis is increased, 
in in fasting lipogenesis is prohibited or inhibited lipolysis is inhibited in well fed state so in fasting the lipolysis is increased in insulin inhibits uh, hormone sensitive lipase glucagon activates hormone sensitive lipase lipoprotein lipase active free fatty acids in blood increased in fasting because this glucagon mobilizing the triacylglycosides to circulation as in capillary walls there is presence of hormone sensitive lipase activated uh, hormone sensitive lipase is breaking the Triacyl glycerols, which are mobilized from adipose tissue, so TAG broken down to glycerol and free fatty acids. So that's the reason. In case of uh, fasting, you can see more free fatty acids in the circulation. Adipose tissue and diabetes mellitus. So what is the prominent uh, connection between the adipose tissue metabolism and then diabetes mellitus? In diabetes, lipolysis enhances and high free fatty acid levels in plasma is noticed. Why? Because what is happening in diabetes? Though you have high concentration of glucose, as we have uh, noted in the beginning of this slide. GLUT4 receptors that which are present in adipose tissue as well as in muscles are the, under the influence of insulin. So what is happening in case of uh, insulin deficiency? These two GLUT4 receptors are not working. Okay. So what is happening? No insulin. So glucagon will be dominant. So more lipolysis. Okay. So this hormone sensitive lipase has always been active mode. So more lipolysis. So more free fatty acids you can see in the circulation so insulin acts through receptors on the self surface of adipocytes these receptors are decreased as there is an insulin deficiency in diabetes so leading to insulin insensitivity in diabetes so and what is the relation adipose tissue and obesity so the fat content of the adipose tissue that can increase the unlimited amounts depending on the amount of excess calories taken in this leads to obesity so come again the fat content of adipose tissue that can increase to unlimited amounts okay depending on the amount of excess calories so your your calorie intake is high your storage capacity of adipose tissue is also high so that leading to obesity so high level of plasma insulin level is noticed in case of obesity so nearly it is indication of the existence of insulin is nearby but the insulin receptors are decreased yes you have prominent amounts of insulin but space for the uh, storage of TAG in adipose tissue has been increased. So as the space increases, the availability of receptor to act insulin has been decreased. So it is showing peripheral resistance against insulin action. Okay, peripheral resistance against insulin action. When fat droplets are overloaded, the nucleus of adipose tissue cell is degraded, cell is destroyed and TAG become extracellular. Actually, initially they are intracellular. Now as cell is degraded, as cell is destroyed, TAG has become extracellular. Such TAG cannot be metabolically reutilized and forms dead bulk in the waste individual. So these are not active TAG. As once this TAG become extracellular, they cannot be reutilized. Okay, they are like dead bulk in the waste individuals. So adipokines. So what is this? Adipokine is a hormone. Okay, adipokines are adipose tissue derived hormones which regulate the uh, fat uh, metabolism in adipose tissue. Okay, the important adipokines are leptin, adiponectin, resistin, and TNF alpha and interleukin 6. Okay, so these are all the hormones which are derived from the adipose tissues. Leptin each is having their directive functions. Leptin is a small peptide produced by adipocytes. Leptin receptors are present in specific regions of the brain. Okay, the feeding behavior regulated by leptin. The defect in leptin or its receptor can lead to obesity. Okay, so leptin has a crucial role in obesity. So if you are having ample amounts of leptin, your TAG metabolism in adipose tissue is well balanced. If there is a deficiency of leptin, the person may be prone for obesity. So decreased levels of leptin increases chance of obesity. Adiponectin is another type of polypeptide which increases insulin sensitivity of muscle and liver. Low levels of adiponectin will accelerate atherosclerosis. So, adiponectin has a role in cardiovascular diseases in relation to the fat metabolism. Low levels are also observed in patients with metabolic syndrome. So, in metabolic syndrome, the main parameter to be noted here is adiponectin. So, adiponectin levels are low if the person is suffering with metabolic syndrome. So, when you come across the picture here, so that leptin regulating food intake and energy expenditure, you see site of action on hypothalamus and uh, what is happening here? So adipose tissue which secreting leptin and this leptin acting on the hypothalamus. So here what it will do? So leptin receptors in hypothalamus and action it decreases the food intake and increases the energy expenditure and body weight. So that is the importance of leptin. 
So this adipose tissue, when it increases the concentration of leptin and secrete into the circulation, they will directly acting on hypothalamus because hypothalamus has got leptin receptors and it can it can go and it can direct the hypothalamus like hunger center. It will uh, deprive the hunger center. So obviously, if the hunger center is on off, so person will uh, is not willing to take food. So your food intake will be reduced. And at the same time, this leptin increases directs hypothalamus to direct the other uh, metabolically active hormones to increase the metabolic pathways which are involved in energy expenditure and also it maintains the body weight. So, white adipose tissue. What is white adipose tissue? It is mainly concerned with energy storage. Okay, you can see it is made up of uh, spherical cells with very few mitochondria. Okay, uh, there is another thing brown adipose tissue which you can see in. Uh, children more compared to adults in newborns children and compared to adults okay and white adipose tissue with limited mitochondria okay and brown adipose tissue with more mitochondria okay that is a, one of the significant difference it is uh, the triglycerides form a major component of white adipose tissue with oleic acid okay is the most dominant fatty acid okay that is uh, 80% and brown adipose tissue involved in thermogenesis thermogenesis means nothing but production of heat Okay, the brown color is due to presence of numerous mitochondria and here mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell which involve in production of ATP. So, in case of brown adipose tissue, what is happening here? Instead of producing ATPs, most of the energy, okay, that will be dissipated as heat. So, that's why brown adipose tissue is involved in thermogenesis. It's primarily important in newborn human beings and adult and in hibernating animals. Okay, depends on the climate, okay, especially this brown adipose tissue play major role in hibernating animals, people who are living in cold country and also in the newborn people to keep them warm. Next, so thermogenesis as I told you, it is a process found in brown adipose tissue, it liberates heat by uncoupling oxygen. So here mitochondria, there is a, a pathway electron transport chain, it is a coupled process. Okay, what to say oxidation and then phosphorylation. So that is why it is oxidative phosphorylation, it's two pathways are coupled. Here brown adipose tissue okay there is no link for the two pathways like oxidation and phosphorylation so phosphorylation is a site where atp is generated so here instead of phosphorylation oxidation is alone taking place and rest of the energy will be dissipated as heat so energy is released as heat instead of uh, trapping it is in the high energy bonds of atp by action of uncoupling protein thermogenic so liver adipose tissue axis so there should be a balance between the liver TAG and adipose TAG. Okay, so liver produces fatty acid and TAG, which is transported via the transport of uh, lipoprotein that is VLDL in the blood. And the fatty acids from VLDL are taken up by adipose tissue with the help of lipoprotein lipase and stored as TAG. Okay, and the, this neutral fat is hydrolyzed by hormone sensitive lipase into non essential fatty acids, which is then that is carried by the albumin. Okay, the non essential fatty acid is replaced by peripheral tissues, excess of which can be taken up by the liver cells. Thus, there is a constant flux of fat molecules from liver to adipose tissue. So, there should be a proper access and proper balance between the shuffling of these molecules between liver and adipose tissue. So, if you see the diagrammatic representation liver and then fatty acid and the peripheral tissue, okay. So, the medium for transportation of TAG from liver to other parts is VLDL. So, VLDL not only adipose tissue, it will transport peripheral tissues like skeletal muscles. So, little b by tricep reserves where it will be, there is an circulation in capillaries, there is a lipoprotein lipase, so which breaks down the TH into free fatty acids. Those free fatty acids taken by the tricep reserve and it can be converted with the help of dihydroxyacetone phosphate to TAG and it's stored. So, then when you require, as I said, active adipose tissue, they are metabolically active, so they synthesize n number of uh, TAG in a day and at the same time they can metabolize n number of TAG. So, the degraded TAG will be like fatty acids will be supplied to peripheral tissues and then again they will be transported back to liver to make up again the TAG. So, this is a circular process. So, there should be a balance between liver and adipose tissue. So, what is the main role here in the metabolism of uh, this TAG between liver and adipose tissue? So, main thing is secretion of bile salts, synthesis of fatty acid, triacyl, glycerols and phospholipids oxidation of fatty acids, production of lipoproteins, production of ketone bodies, synthesis and excretion of cholesterol. So, all these play major role between the balancing of liver and adipose tissue axis. So, that's all about TAG synthesis and its metabolism in adipose tissue. 
thanks for watching thank you